We're going to go to the Wayback Machine now. In 1992, Bill Clinton was running for the White House. Whitney Houston starred in The Bodyguard. Taylor Swift was three years old. And embryos <laughs> were frozen. That just made history for one family today. Because, And Dr. Sanjay Gupta is going to show us their journey. Here it is. In April of 1992, more than 30 years ago, the world was a lot different. Bill Clinton was running for president. Phones looked like this. I was 23 years old. And at a small clinic, these embryos were frozen, suspended in time at nearly 200 degrees below zero, waiting patiently at the National Embryo Donation Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. That is until just a few weeks ago, when twins Timothy and Lydia were born to Rachel and Philip Ridgway of Oregon. When we heard about embryo adoption, the thought that's something we would like to do and it's something we think we're able to do. Adoption refers to living children and it's a judicial order, it's a legal process by which a, a, a parent-child relationship is created when it did not previously exist. Dr. Segal Klipstein is a fertility specialist in Chicago and chairs the American Society of Reproductive Medicine's Ethics Committee. She was not involved in the Ridgeway's case. Embryo donation is a medical procedure. It's a way by which we take embryos from one couple or individual and then transfer them into another uh, individual in order to build families. Freezing embryos is not a new technique. In fact, the first baby born from a frozen embryo was back in 1984 but at a time when medical science has pushed the boundaries of life earlier and earlier, a new question has arisen. How late is too late? Going into this process, we wanted to choose children that um, in our eyes were the most unwanted, the most needy, the ones in a lot of ways that have been overlooked. Intentionally or not, the Ridgeways have set a record. After 29 years and 10 months, the donated embryos are believed to be the oldest embryos ever to result in a live birth. We weren't looking to get the oldest embryos that have been frozen the longest in the world. We just wanted the ones that have been waiting at the NEDC the longest. NEDC is a faith-based center. The center says they have now facilitated more than 1,200 births through donated embryos. And according to the Society of Assisted Reproductive Medicine, the number of donated embryos has steadily climbed from about 1,000 a year in 2013 to about 2,100 in 2020, of which around 40% result in a live birth. Dr. Gordon hands me a picture and I see the three of them and then he said, uh, so, you know, multiples you know, can cause problems in pregnancy. And so he goes, so at this point, I would recommend just transferring two. We'll put the third in the freezer. You guys can come back for it. And so I looked back at Dr. Gordon and, and started to get teary-eyed and said, no, you've just shown me a picture of my three children. I have to have them all. I didn't think we would get triplets. Um, I figured that the more likely outcome would be a single pregnancy. But during an ultrasound, they discovered they were having twins. We don't think there's any risk to freezing embryos that's related to the number of years that the embryo is frozen. Um, we have been cryopreserving embryos for nearly 40 years, and there's not been an increased uh, risk to the babies or to the pregnant women. What makes the embryo a good quality oftentimes is the age of the woman at the time that she donated eggs. And so the younger the woman, the more likely that embryo is going to be chromosomally normal. For the Ridgeways, it's all part of something larger, something they view as a personal mission. It was hard to wrap your mind around it. I was five years old when God gave life to, to Lydia and Timothy. In a very real sense, they're our oldest children, even though they're our smallest children. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, reporting.